Hello, this is Dr. Gay from Forsaken Second Mirai. And these are four patients who have arachnoid cysts, which are benign fluid collections that are over the surface of the brain. And they're in the area where the CSF, or the cerebrospinal fluid is. They're usually benign and asymptomatic, but they can slowly grow over time, and rarely they can compress the brain enough to cause problems like hydrocephalus. So this is the first case. And this is a fluid collection here, a well-defined fluid collection. And this is in the patient's right cerebellopontine angle. This is a common location. This is the cerebellum. This is the pons down here. And this is called the cerebellopontine angle, or the CP angle. And this is a benign fluid collection. It's pushing on the seventh and eighth nerve complex here. So this could cause some problems with the hearing or balance. But when they're small like this, again, generally asymptomatic. We notice them and mention them as probably of no clinical significance. One of the most common places I see them is here in the middle cranial fossa, in front of the temporal lobe. Many times I see them here, and um, they're so common here that we uh, just mention them as an aside. They're almost never uh, symptomatic in this region. I'm going to go to the next patient now. Now this next arachnoid cyst is back here. It's to the left of midline. This is the patient's cerebellum. On this sagittal view, we see their nose over here in the front. This is in the back, and we see the cerebrum up top, cerebellum down here, and this is the big fluid collection. This is, again, above the cerebellum and below the cerebrum, and this is the patient's what we call their tectal plate or tectum, or the quadrigeminal plate, and we call these quadrigeminal plate arachnoid cysts. So, again, between the cerebrum and cerebellum, and this patient wraps around to the left, and goes across the midline to the right. Common location. Here's another patient who has a arachnoid cyst in a similar location. This is the tectum here. So there's a quadrigeminal plate arachnoid cyst again. Right back here again between the cerebrum and cerebellum, right behind the tectum. This is small, goes off to the right of midline. And now we're on to the next one. Now this is a young patient. They had an arachnoid cyst that had um, a VP shunt put in. This dark area here is metal, a metallic susceptibility artifact. And this is basically a drain. A catheter went in to drain this, uh, the ventricle. And this dark area here is a part of the shunt. Um, and it's metallic. And usually these catheters will drain the fluid collection or the ventricle, come off to a little metal area here underneath the skin. And there's a, another catheter that goes down into the a peritoneal cavity down in the pelvis to drain the fluid. We call it a VP shunt. Now this patient's shunt is up here. That dark line, horizontal dark line, is their shunt catheter. And it looks like it's just above the fluid collection here, not within it. So it may be within the ventricle, decompressing the ventricle. But this big, huge thing here is the arachnoid cyst. So the arachnoid cyst um, is large. It's pushing on the adjacent structures. And the patient is experiencing headaches. And we see this is the patient's tectum, so another quadrigeminal plate arachnoid cyst. This one goes off to the left and here into the middle cranial fossa, so a large arachnoid cyst. This is the patient's midbrain. This morphology on the right is about normal, but you can see on the left it's displaced anteriorly and flattened and compressed. And so significant mass effect on this, and we believe this may be the cause of their headaches. But very rarely can these grow like this and get larger and larger and cause symptoms. This is that catheter going over the top of it, and it looks like it's outside of the cyst, but maybe within um, the ventricle that's decompressed. So four examples of arachnoid cysts, and thank you very much.